Our final speaker for today, let's invite Ms. Diana Ibra, Director of the Shuyuan ISF Academy, to give a speech on sustainability in schools, authentic experience, student-led initiatives, and systematic behavior change. A number of innovative sustainability programs have been implemented onto the campus and throughout the curriculum for all schools. I'm going to focus on some of the educational opportunities that I've done and that we've worked on as a team in the last couple of years, but equally important on the other side that I think has made what we've done at ISF so successful is our procurement team has walked this journey with us. So they've done a lot of green purchasing, they've listened to student voice, there's been board decisions based on what the students want to see, and there's been activities around that. And I couldn't have done this without the support of the procurement teams. I was hired for the sole purpose of reaching out to universities and coming up with programs that were different from anything else of what was being done and to find opportunities for our students to learn how real scientists and real engineers actually work. So in 2013, we started on the sustainability journey and we put in a lot of infrastructure, but then what we've really spent a lot of time on is how do we implement this into the curriculum and make it meaningful for all students. So what you can see right here is a map of the school, but you can see that we're putting in a biodiversity garden. And that was a space that was gonna be accessible to students, and I insisted that that then be an educational space. We're so crowded for space here in Hong Kong that if you have a space where you can get students somewhere on that campus, you have to figure out how to make it a learning experience. So that biodiversity garden has a lot of the plants that would be considered native to Hong Kong. So they're able to do some science studies around that and it's a great little space for them to be able to go out and meet. You can see down there the rooftop gardens that we have and our rooftop gardens have gotten to be so popular that we have them on another building now as well. We have over 500 children organic farming on this campus. Students in Hong Kong don't have that opportunity. They don't get to garden. They don't get to touch soil the same way that some of us in this room might have. We also have air pollution monitors for our outdoor air. And we, we worked with Hong Kong UST on this to come up with air pollution monitors that are comparable to what you would see in a roadside station. And we did that so that our students could do real life research around microclimates as well as the differences in air pollution in different parts of the city. I have 60 um, solar panels that are at 22 degrees and I have 12 vertical solar panels that are south facing. When we put this system in, there was no feed-in tariff rate. So we made this a standalone microgrid that could be where we on campus would install and use all of the energy that's produced. And we did the 12 vertical panels because we really wanted to be able to show the community that there's a lot of potential in vertical solar panels, especially in Hong Kong, because we're, we don't have the land space and we don't have the rooftops. And then I have what's called a Center for Renewal Energy Education. And this is my outdoor laboratory. And we have about five or six different technologies on that space, as well as um, the information. We're collecting the data. We've got um, polycrystalline, monocrystalline, thin film. We have a hot water heater. We have a small hydro generator, and we have some flexi solar on that. So again, what I've done is I've created opportunities for our students to do a lot of research on these different technologies and really understand them. Rather than just seeing them in a textbook or seeing them on a PowerPoint slide, they're up there on that roof learning what it's about. So how was I going to use this solar energy and make it meaningful to students? And this was where we, um, we wired so that rooftop, right below that, I have six grade three classrooms. And so what I needed to do is I needed to make it so that my third graders, they're eight years old, know when they're on solar energy. So we put a traffic light in every one of the classrooms. And when that traffic light is green, those kids know they're on green power. If it's amber, what that means is that the battery is low. 
and those students can make a decision as to whether or not they want to try and stay green longer. So we we have surprisingly we've got eight we've got eight year olds that take this really seriously, and that we start the actual you know more formal education piece of it along with this experiential learning. Now we already know that some of these technologies, we're ready for those third generation ones that Ken talked about. We want to add in solar glass. We want to add in more different types of behind that wall. We want to put more thin film on that wall. So again, we're also in the process of starting the next phase of what we're going to do on the campus and we're calling that Renewable Energy 2.0. So now the other thing that we've done is this is a three-dimensional app. And what we've done is we have put 5,000 energy sensors into our school. What we can do with our students is I can use their schedule and I can hand every student their own energy footprint while they're a student at the school. There is a conference and it's held in the United States and it's called the American Geophysical Union. There's 25,000 scientists that come in for this conference but what they do is they have a poster session for high school kids. And so I take, I'm the only international school in the world that does this, but for the last seven years, we take students to the United States and every one of these kids has done their own student-led research project. And I have been able to tell the sustainability story by taking these students to this conference. Okay, so now, my very first project, <laughs> when we started all of this, it's four meters long, it's a meter in diameter, and this is our food waste composting system. It's a, an aerobic system, it has a 14 day resonant time, so I put food waste in at the hatchet, and it comes out the back side of it 14 days later, and I have um, composted soil. But again, all of this goes into my gardens. And this is what happens, is every single day, the hard work of scraping the food waste off of the student plates has to happen. You know, I mean, I think one of the things that we're trying to teach our students is if, if we create waste, dealing with waste is hard work. And it requires that you think through that entire cycle. And the other thing we're doing right now is we're starting to look at indoor air pollution. And indoor air pollution, well, outdoor air pollution, hence indoor air pollution is something that's of concern to our parents. So I'm always on the, I'm always on the hunt for interesting and new and different things. This is a large scale textile waste upcycling art design. We work with Redress, an NGO that collects textile waste. Again, another major problem. And what we've done is we've done a weaving, knitting installation. This will be about, I think it's about 15 meters long and um, it'll hang from the atrium of our school and it gives us a chance to tell the story about the problems of textile waste in Hong Kong. So last week I had another idea. <laughs> it took me a year to convince the PE team that I could do this <laughs> and I could the swimming pool manager but our students did a week of swimming with plastic for their PE lessons. And I, you know, I would, I would stand up and I would talk to the kids and be like, okay, you know what? Channel your inner turtle, you know, figure this out. But we did kayaking lessons, we did rescue lessons, and we did lessons around um, them actually playing water polo. So I do all of this with a lot of work from a lot of different um, departments. The sustainability stewards are faculty that are taking their professional development time this year to learn the ins and outs of all the infrastructure that we've put in place. And we have student groups. So here we are, there's some of us who are up gardening and planting. And that's it, thank you.